Radial arterial puncture for arterial blood gas analysis is a common procedure performed in medicine. It is a fundamental skill that all medical trainees need to acquire. This video will review radial arterial puncture in the adult population. Puncture of the radial artery is the preferred method of obtaining an arterial blood sample for blood gas analysis. The chief indication for measurement of arterial blood gas level is to obtain values for the partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide and for arterial pH. This information is needed when assessing a patient with acute severe respiratory distress. Measurements of arterial pH and the partial pressures of carbon dioxide and oxygen provide accurate information on the status of acid-base balance and gas exchange. Another indication for arterial blood gas analysis is cooximetry in order to assess for methemoglobinemia and carboxyhemoglobin. Radial arterial puncture is contraindicated in the presence of a known deficiency of collateral circulation to the distal upper extremity. Some physicians advocate for the use of the modified Allen test to assess the adequacy of collateral circulation of the radial artery by the ulnar artery. The Allen test is controversial, however, in that its ability to predict the risk of rare ischemic complications accurately is limited. Thus, based on current evidence, its use can be neither refuted nor supported. To perform the Allen test, occlude both the ulnar and radial arteries. Instruct the patient to make a fist to drain the blood from the hand. This should be done for approximately 30 seconds. Instruct the patient to unclench the fist. The patient's palm should appear blanched or pale. Now release pressure only from the ulnar artery. Adequate collateral circulation is indicated by the return of normal color within 10 seconds. Alternative techniques that can be used to measure collateral circulation of the forearm include color Doppler flow study, plethysmography, and MRI. These methods are more often used when assessing the radial artery for more invasive procedures such as arterial harvesting for coronary bypass. In addition, radial arterial puncture should not be performed in the presence of an overlying skin infection. It is relatively contraindicated in patients receiving anticoagulants or in those with coagulopathies because of the increased risk of bleeding and hematoma formation. Standard arterial blood gas sampling kits are readily available that contain a syringe, a small 23 to 25 gauge needle either with a rubber stopper that may be used to remove the needle from the syringe or with an attached safety cap, and a syringe cap containing dry lithium heparin or sodium heparin. The concentration of heparin here varies depending on the manufacturer of the kit. You will also need the following, alcohol swabs, sterile pieces of gauze, tape, non-sterile gloves and a non-sterile gown, 1% lidocaine without epinephrine for local analgesia, a 5cc syringe with a 25 gauge needle, a small rolled towel to place under the wrist, and a bag of ice in which to transport the sample to the lab if required. Arterial blood gas sampling often takes place in an emergency setting and may not allow for obtaining consent from the patient or next of kin. When possible, the procedure should be explained to the patient and consent obtained. Wash your hands according to good standards prior to examining the patient. Extend the patient's wrist to bring the radial artery close to a more superficial position. The radial artery is located between the styloid process of the radius and the flexor carpi radialis tendon. First, palpate the styloid process of the radius. Next, palpate the flexor carpi radialis tendon located medial to the styloid process of the radius. Now locate the artery between these two points. The artery may be difficult to palpate, for example, in the presence of overlying edema or vasospasm. A portable Doppler ultrasound device may be used to identify the location of the radial artery in these instances. Okay. 
extend the patient's wrist and place a rolled towel under it to maintain it in an extended position. Once the patient's wrist is positioned, put on a non-sterile gown and non-sterile gloves. Open the arterial blood gas kit and identify all the components so they are ready for use. Clean the site with an alcohol swab. Palpate the radial pulse and determine the point of maximum impulse or use the Doppler ultrasound device to identify the location of the radial artery. Using the 5cc syringe and small needle, draw up 1% lidocaine. Upon introducing the needle under the skin, draw back on the plunger to ensure that you have not punctured a vessel. Inject a small wheel of analgesic around the artery and wait 30 to 60 seconds for the lidocaine to take effect. Again, locate the maximum impulse with the index and middle fingers of the non-dominant hand. Holding the arterial blood gas syringe with the dominant hand, aim the needle away from the hand and toward the upper arm and puncture the skin at a 30 to 45 degree angle at a point just below the index and middle fingers of the non-dominant hand. Advance the needle slowly until the syringe easily and passively fills with bright red pulsating blood. Ideally, you should obtain at least one to two cc's of blood. If no blood is obtained, do not pull back on the plunger. Withdraw the needle slowly until it is just under the skin and reattempt the procedure. After the blood sample is collected, withdraw the syringe and have an assistant apply pressure to the site with sterile gauze for approximately five minutes. In the meantime, expel the air bubbles from the syringe. Cover the needle with the attached safety cap and remove the needle from the syringe or remove the needle from the syringe using the rubber stopper. Attach the heparin-containing cap and, while holding the cap in place, push the plunger of the syringe to ensure the blood encounters the heparin. This will prevent the blood from clotting. Ensure that the syringe is labeled with the patient's name and unit number. Place the entire syringe in the bag of ice if transport to the lab is required. After pressure has been applied to the puncture site for five minutes, affix the gauze with some tape. Dispose of all sharps in the designated sharps containers. The most common technical difficulty associated with radial arterial puncture for arterial blood gas analysis is failure to obtain a blood sample because of vasospasm or obtaining venous instead of arterial blood. If vasospasm is suspected, abort the procedure and reattempt it on the other wrist. A blood sample is likely to be venous if it is non-pulsatile and dark in color and it flows slowly. It should be noted, however, that very deoxygenated blood in a patient with hypoxemia could also appear dark even though it is arterial. Serious vascular complications of radial arterial puncture are rare and include radial arterial aneurysm, hand ischemia, and hematoma causing compartment syndrome. Arterial blood gas analysis provides useful information regarding respiratory and metabolic pathology. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide, bicarbonate concentrations, and pH values will assist in diagnosing the presence of primary or mixed respiratory and metabolic acidoses or alkaloses. The partial pressure of oxygen will reveal abnormalities in blood oxygen content and the presence of hypoxemia. With the appropriate technique, radial arterial puncture for arterial blood gas analysis is a skill easily mastered by medical trainees. A more detailed approach to acid-base disorders and hypoxemic respiratory failure, while necessary, is beyond the scope of this instructional video.